Hello, everyone. My name is Hank Sutala. And I'm Dr. K, Dr. Kriniak. And we're here with another episode of Holistic Highlights. Hello, everyone. And for those of you who might be watching for the first time, my name is Hank Suttle, and I'm one of the owners at Holistic Health and Healing, which is a healing center in North Olmsted. And Dr. K happens to have a, a place in the same uh, plaza as us, and she's one of our affiliates. And once a week, we get together to talk about different topics that we think might uh, bring uh, just different possibilities into your life. And today is a big one. Today is insomnia. And so many people, and ironically, somebody messaged me maybe 30 minutes before the shows uh, that I haven't talked to in years. And they're just like, Hey, um, is, can I talk to you about some sleep issues I'm having? And it's just like, really? Wow. It's just in the air. So the, the topic is very timely. It is. And it's, it's a big one. It's a load. It's a loaded one. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's so many different reasons for insomnia. Gosh, lots. So I literally, I think I am in the process myself of putting maybe a little course together that people can just get. And uh, it's something recorded that will give you all the tips. And then if somebody needs to dive in more to find the causes, then then we we can dive in more. But to give an, an overview, because literally it is like this, much, I like have it all written out because it's so much information. Um, well, cool. So, and on that note, if you need a recording, like, that's one thing that Melissa and I were doing, and we're also we're planning to do at the center is to have pre-recorded content available for people. So um, I have all the camera equipment. So if you need help with that, that might that be something be awesome. like a separate project. Sorry, if people, a little shop talk on the beginning of the stream here, but that that is all great stuff that's going to be coming down the pipeline uh, that we can be offering to people, not just that class, but a couple of a lot of other things that we're getting ready to film too. Yeah. That, that would be awesome. That, that way you can study at home, you can take the time to review because sometimes these things go quickly and then, you know, you forget or you want to go back to a video. I knew I do that all the time. Like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll listen to that later. And then it never happens. So something you can have at home with all the, you know, printed out materials, you can review and maybe go into some of those things and start picking apart. Um, trying to find out where, where does insomnia start and what happens um, I think one of the, the, we'll go over some very broad, I think starting with broad, um, broad categories of where insomnia can start. So, you know, true causes of insomnia can include, I think one of the biggest ones is emotional disturbance, anything from heartbreak to loss to, um, uh, you know, emotional stress, unresolved issues that are kind of eating away, um, to-do lists. I have a lot of people that say, well, I just, you know, I lay down and I'm like, I've got all these things to, to do and uh, I can't fall asleep. Um, also things like uh, obviously stress over and under active adrenal glands, um, a sluggish liver that's producing spasms due to multiple things such as heavy metal toxins, other toxins, low grade viral infections such as Epstein-Barr, um, that gets into your nervous tissue and kind of keeps stirring things up so you can't fall asleep. Um, th those are, and, and gut issues, believe it or not, leaky gut can cause an issue too because a lot of our hormones are produced in the gut. So those are some big, broad areas um, that, can, that can start causing insomnia. And the other flip side of it um, also is the soul level and sometimes our souls like to, a lot of times, our souls like to travel at night. <laughs> and that makes us a little fatigued when we wake up in the morning. Um, uh, our souls go out and do things at night and learn lessons or help others um, or go places. So sometimes it's a matter of keeping us in our own self. And sometimes it's a combination of all these things. So. <laughs> Yeah. When it comes to the soul traveling part of it, that oftentimes happens when someone's already asleep and different types of brain waves allow for that type of experience. And depending on when you wake up, if you have the opportunity to, you know, take a normal landing or more of a crash landing, depending on how quickly you wake up, that can cause uh, different fatigue symptoms as well. Though I'm not a medical doctor, of course. Yeah, you know. That's probably more but, of fatigue rather yeah. than insomnia, but um, waking right. up. And then we talked about sleep cycles in one of our other, other videos and I gave Hank a little link. There's another link yep. that I had and I just can't seem to locate it, but it's basically, you know, trying to wake up more refreshed because that's a challenge too. 
um, waking up at the right time because you notice sometimes if you oversleep, you don't feel, you go back to bed. We talked about that and you, you wake up and you're more tired, um, you know, things like that, that you're not, the soul travel is probably more of a fatigue thing rather than insomnia, but it's, it's a big broad topic because maybe then you feel like you haven't slept well. So it's part of an right. insomnia issue. And one um, of those things uh, to just to describe it. And well, the first, the link that you mentioned, I put in the comments and I know that not co comments don't post to all the different places that we're streaming to. So the website is HTTPS colon slash slash and then sleepy ti.me for like sleepy time, but there's a dot between the I and the M. So sleepy ti.me and that is a website that it looks like you can uh, tell it different things to calculate when you should go to bed and um, when you plan to fall asleep in order for you to hit your sleep cycles like when you plan to wake up it kind of backward calculates now this is good for most people but sometimes sleep cycles do vary so some if it doesn't work exactly. for you right off the bat then you may have to just tweak it a little bit because some people it's 90 minutes some people might be 85 minutes and so on but when you put it out on three or four cycles now you might have like a 40 minute gap of when you should have started to fall asleep for example so you do have to play with it a little bit but it looks like an amazing resource to kind of help you calculate when is the ideal time to fall asleep so you do wake up refreshed right and i have kind of tinkered with that and it does work it is a generality yes every single individual is different so we try to just give some generality some things to you know there's another one uh called uh sleep calculator as well, sleepcalculator.com. I didn't give you that link. It's very similar to this one. There's many other apps out there. So here's the challenge though with the apps to try to fall asleep. Now we're getting more into fatigue, but- um, well, it's all in <laughs> It's all in one thing. Uh, but you know, the, the, the challenge with these apps that you know you put next to, you put your phone next to you and they, it's supposed to monitor how your sleep, how you and your, your body specifically, your rhythm, um, don't forget that you're getting the radiation from the phone. So it's kind of a catch 22 and that in itself may not allow you to sleep. So we did the whole 5G uh, video quite a while back. Was it uh, probably about four or five weeks ago already? But... Yeah, boy, it's, it's hard to believe that we've been doing them this long already. <laughs> yeah, but if, right. uh, if you want to go back to the archives, there is um, the it's a, have, it's a picture of a guy like leaping across like a cliff and it says like 4G to 5G and the whole episode was talking about like how 5G may affect us. And one of the recommendations was at the at night, just unplug the internet, literally. Yeah. Like uh, unplug it at the router and just see yeah. what your experience is. Do you really need to have your uh, the internet on to sleep? Yes. Probably not. Uh, I've, so I've like, been doing that. <laughs> And so it makes a difference. Yeah. So give it a give it a chance and not just one day. Like if you do it for a week and then mm -hmm. but my experience is when you do something like that, when you remove something and then you reintroduce it after a period of time, you can really feel the shift in the body because it might take you a week just to get out of whatever it was doing to you. And then if you right. were to plug it back in and see what your experience is, it might be like, oh, oh well, my, like you, you would really feel the difference and make it, it would be more notable then. Yeah, I tell people two weeks. Give it that's oh, a, that should weeks. be enough time to to really get the feel. I have noticed a difference. And don't just if you have a power strip, don't just hit off on the power strip. Literally unplug the whole thing so it's off. Um, and I have noticed a difference. So so that's the challenge with some of these apps is you want you want it to analyze your sleep cycle, but at the same time your sleep cycle may come up skewed because you are getting the radiation from the phone. So I, I encourage to maybe try one, trying one of these apps to see if that works a little bit better rather than having the phone next to you. So that's the other, yeah, one of the other reasons of insomnia is uh, radiation, TV, TV, fan, all these things, you know. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know when I, oh, there was a time in my life where my version of falling asleep was to just watch TV until I literally passed out. And that wasn't falling asleep. That was just, you know, uh, just... I, I was over engaging the brain then because I'm watching something. Right. And then what kind of right. dreams are you having if you were just watching something like the matrix that has violence or something oh, like that? Yeah. Then, so even the sleep you're getting might be taunted by what you were watching because it's in your psyche and you might be dreaming about that or having stuff like that. Just a couple of people checking in saying good morning and looking morning. forward to some good information. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you're just joining us, this is uh, meant as a very interactive experience. We're providing information, but if you have a question or there's something specific happening in your world, uh, please make a comment. We're happy to tailor our conversation around what uh, what energy is going on in your world. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we've gone on tang tangents, but 
Insomnia. So, so what does insomnia classify? It can't fall asleep, can't stay asleep, toss and turn, light sleepers waking up too early, um, daytime sleepiness, not being refreshed in the morning. That's kind of, that's a combination of insomnia and fatigue because they kind of go hand in hand. Um, one of the, you know, biggest, so I, I mentioned some of the broad categories, but leaky gut hormones, um, stress, alcohol use is a big one. Uh, for insomnia, and I've noticed that since I've, you know, I, I used to have glasses of wine at night, and I'm sure Hank can kind of attest to that too. But like, you know, that I used to that just it helps you fall asleep, but it alcohol does a funny thing; it doesn't allow for deep REM sleep. And since I have done some of my shows, and I couldn't have any alcohol, and I had to, you know, that had to get cut out. Now I notice whenever I have more than like a small glass of wine, I if I have two to three glasses or drink a lot at a party i sleep terribly like terribly let's that, that's how big of a difference it is right. and like hank mentioned like if you've been on a certain pattern for a long time you may not be noticing that remove alcohol for a month try to just cold turkey and don't do anything for a month and then go back and have like four glasses of wine and see how you sleep you'll notice a difference Right. Well, if you so, cut it out for a month, maybe you don't need to. Well, I've been sober for 12 years, so I'd be like, I, I, I was, I wasn't the drink a glass of wine person. I was like, drink the whole bottle of whiskey, <laughs> person. And and then you were just passing out. But you're right with the REM. Like you would wake up, and even if you slept for eight hours, it would be like you didn't sleep at all. And one thing that um, you may not, well, I'm sure you know, but our listeners may or may not know about REM sleep is that is where your brain processes short-term to long-term memory. And so if you think about women who have babies, or even men who, have, when they're taking care of the infant as well, and you have to wake up so many times throughout the night like at work you're like not remembering things and it's it's not that you're not necessarily getting enough sleep but REM sleep keeps getting interrupted and you can't transfer short-term to long-term memory and it has a huge impact on your mental faculties then. exactly so that's why you're, you're it's really important to stay in if you can at least get into a pattern of about five to six hours of uninterrupted sleep you will notice a difference but increments of getting up to go to the bathroom or tossing and turning waking up not being able to fall asleep You'll notice you'll be funky, but alcohol is one of those things that I hear so much. Well, I have a glass of wine so that I can fall asleep. Yes, you're falling asleep. Great. But your quality of sleep when you're asleep is going to be very poor. And this is something that I actually learned way back. I have a degree in psychology as well, a bachelor's, because that's the road I was going to go on at some point. So that was taught way back then and emphasized that it does not allow you get to get into that REM cycle that you need uh, to feel rested. And there's, you know, there's, that's a definite, I, I even noticed that. So, I mean, enter and decide at your own risk. I know a lot of people that are, you know, um, subduing things with alcohol and just, it helps me sleep. It helps you. Sure. It, 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 it's a CNS central nervous system depressant. So you will fall asleep, but it doesn't, it interferes with the REM cycle. So that's a, just a little tidbit. Um, nutritional factors. So lack of minerals, uh, lack of melatonin, your body will produce its own melatonin, but there's various reasons why your body may not produce, be producing enough of its own melatonin. And uh, everybody's on a different cycle. So there's a whole theory of like our ancestors used to do, go to sleep at sundown and wake up at sunrise. So that's like, you should be in bed by eight, nine o'clock when it's starting, to, you should be preparing and falling asleep when sundown comes and then, you know, wake up at dawn at 430 when the birds start singing. Oh boy, that will not work in Alaska, <laughs> I'll tell you. I've been there for the summer and there's like, if you're there up north around the solstice, I mean, the sun doesn't go down. It just spins in the sky like this. And if you were up there, you just never sleep. And then they, yeah. they have issues in the wintertime with seasonal affective disorder because there's no sunlight. And then they have special things that um, can help with that. But the, the definitely something to do with the seasons and trying to be in some sort of pattern with it. Um, I believe there's uh, some substance around that, but depending where you are in the world, that could not be as realistic as other places. Exactly. So that doesn't, you know, that's the, that has been the mojo in functional medicine that, you know, I've been taught over and over that a lot of like Dr. Wolfson talks about it a lot, but that's not ideal for everybody. And we all have lives. So I tell people do the best that you can to find a pattern of a Keeping a routine is really important, and that will help a lot. Find a time around about that you go to sleep and wake up. Yes, I have to laugh because my routine is not having a routine. Yeah. 
especially with uh, the kids being home all the time. Oh man, it's uh, there's no reason. That's, that's on my list. It's like insomnia. Kids, kids are part of that insomnia. Um, toxins. Uh, these are toxins. It's a whole range of things, but sit in the nerval tissue. They sit in the liver. They excite and affect nerval function. And as we know, nerves are all throughout the body from our brain all the way down through our spinal cord and into our organs. So it will, it will kind of jiggle them. And that can cause things like restless leg. It can cause things like neuropathy. So all these toxins can cause so many different things. And viruses also produce and emit neurotoxins as they replicate. So that can cause an issue too. Work hours where, you know, gosh, people that work at night, I really almost suggest get another job. I, I know that's challenging, but that is affecting your adrenals so much and it is costing you. It is costing you your health. I don't know how else to say that. Sometimes that's really challenging and getting the adrenals to repair can take up to a year sometimes. So some people just work night shift, but I really encourage people to try to find, and for some people that works, but I find that it, it really stresses people and they, they're more fatigued because then they have to go to bed in the morning and then they spend half of the day sleeping. So it's just not our nor it's not the body's normal circadian rhythm. Right. It's designed. And so if you are, if you are in a, cause I know someone uh, just recently that uh, I know that they work nights and if you're in a position where you can't just get another job, uh, one thing that you might be able to do from a sound perspective is there, Barbara Hero did a lot of work around organs and uh, healthy frequencies of the organs. So, and th there was, a lot of science behind it, which I don't fully get, but the idea is that they did the, all these experiments and they were able to determine what a healthy frequency of a liver is versus a diseased liver. And what you, and there's a fork for almost every organ, including the adrenal. So if you have to work at late, that late night job, you could either get a tuning fork or look up the frequency and use a tone generator. But the idea is that if you use the frequency of a healthy adrenal or a healthy heart or a healthy intestine, that it helps the actual organ come into sympathetic resonance. So you could, while you're in the situation, maybe help it along a little bit, but ideally change the environment that's causing the issue. But just a when little. You can. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And I know a guy who sells tuning forks if you need one. <laughs> that's not you, Hank. No, I don't know why you're yeah. right. No, no hint, no subliminal yeah. message there. Yeah, but, but it's holistichealthandhealing.net, then click store, shoot me a message if you need something, because it's a, a whole set, but I can get just the individual fork if I know you're looking for something. So I'm that's just awesome. That. Thank or, you for that. Or use the program like Audacity and just put the tone in for the um, for the organ, and you can just produce it on your computer. But I find that the tuning fork with the harmonics is a little bit more dynamic than uh, like a static tone. But anyhow, and then we got a couple of people saying hello. We got Michael saying hi. Hi, Mike. Doug's checking in. Hi, and then Doug. we got um, Morando. Morad Morando. Very cool. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And if you have yeah. any specific questions, feel free to put them in the chat and we'll be happy to speak to them. Yeah. And my device also helps too. So there's so many different things you can do. Um, we live in a world full of toxins, we live in a world full of stress. And I tell people to try to avoid all that. You're always going to be hit with these things. It's how are you navigating through? That's, you know, what what can you do to keep supporting your body to keep yourself at, at you know, a, at a better pace, at a better vibration? So if you're having to work nights, yeah, reach out to Hank. I, I let me, I can help too, you know, if, until we can get you to a different transition. But I do have to say that that is that is a real challenge sometimes with clients when they ha they're having to do night shift. It, it's yeah. I used to work a shift at the bank. They called it Superflex, and one month you would have like a normal eight to five or nine to six, and the next month you could be working overnight. And every month your schedule would shift uh, yeah. and be different. And they would just change your schedule based on where the need was in the company based on that at that time with with their staffing. And so there was sometimes I would be working till two in the morning or four in the morning, like literally working overnight, but they gave you 10% shift if the whole time uh, for all the months. So uh, that's, it. that's even worse sometimes too, I I think when they shift you around like that. So your body's at least getting to a, a rhythm of, Hey, I work 7 PM to 7 AM. So it's getting like, okay, it's still taxing the adrenals, but at least the body kind of knows this is what's going to start happening when they start doing this, you know, one night you're working next. I mean, you can't, 
you can't get a consistency and the body don't, doesn't know what the heck to do. It's like, what yeah. am I supposed to repair? Well, I kind of liked it at the time I was my in my professional drinking days. So the nights were, <laughs> you know, I, like the, it was always great. If you got off at midnight, you had time to hit the bar and then you could sleep in the next day. I was in a golden state there. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we had someone asking a question, uh, so it's kind of on topic, how to deal with nightmares during the pandemic? Anything in particular were, um, with everything going on but that gets into the psyche and then people having dreams or if it's on their mind uh, how to give the mind ease with everything going on in the world while we go into our sleep time well i think that's an uh, question for both of us um I, on my end really number one like hank said we both said that, you know watch what you're watch what you're watching before you go to bed I encourage people to not watch TV, don't read anything online, just, you know, maybe read a book, relax, take some tea or whatever, sleepy tea, something that, that will calm you uh, probably about two hours, before, an hour at least before you go to bed and watch what you're thinking about too before, as you fall, the last five minutes before you fall asleep is what you're dragging in to your psyche when you fall asleep. So if you're worried about things, if you're concerned about something, if you're having panic attacks, you're dragging that into your sleep. And during that time, your mind is trying to resolve these things. That's kind of my two cents um, on that. There's clearings I'm sure we can do to, to ease that. But if you have some extra tips on that, Hank. Yeah, well, one thing is setting, I have a particular affirmation that was given to me by one of my teachers at Lilydale uh, for, I, and I use it very often when I fall asleep. And it goes like this. I give thanks for I know that as my physical body is asleep and receiving healing, I am learning and serving on the highest levels of life, waking up in the morning, refreshed and renewed, remembering all that I have learned that is for mine or anyone else's highest good. And setting that intention uh, for me also, like even when we had kids uh, for, and we had to wake up and, and do the whole feedings and midnight everything's uh, saying this affirmation really helped to even if I only had 30 minutes of sleep I would wake up and I would feel great yeah. uh, so like setting that affirmation every single night when you go to sleep you're setting the tone for your whole nighttime experience and then avoiding like instead of watching something like the news what could you look uh -huh. at that's inspirational before yes. you go to bed in that two-hour wind down time like right now I'm reading uh, conversations with God book four awaken the species which is all about humanity stepping into being actual human beings instead of human doings and being really awake and aware with our choices and so I've been ever since I started this book it's been just fantastic we're actually doing a book club on it starting next Tuesday oh. if you're interested pick up a copy awesome. and we're going to be uh, doing a live stream to a, a Facebook group and uh, this channel where we're just going to talk about the book and you can come online and participate or just participate via chat but Sean Phillips and I are doing that so um, but find something that can turn the tide uh, yes. with where you're going with your thoughts like yes there's a lot exactly. going on with the pandemic if you do anything healing wise if you're a reiki healer if you do lomi lomi if you do any sort of modality as you fall asleep just offer a contribution to the universe for the easement of humanity even so you could like what possibility could you create as a healer and if you don't have a modality maybe pick one up just a small one but the idea with all any of those things is you are using the energy not your energy so it's not like you are doing it yourself you're allowing it to flow through you and, and just yeah. being in the flow of that, as that you start to flow that, a lot of that heaviness that's in you starts to flow out with it. So Absolutely. Um, a, lot of, a lot of things around that. Yeah, meditation is great too. I really recommend meditating, but you know, 15 minutes before, even five, 10 minutes, whatever you can do before you go to bed and using something during that meditation, doing something like Hank's affirmation, whatever resonates with you to quiet the mind. The other thing that happens sometimes with nightmares though that's coming to me is what... I'm sorry, I don't remember who that, who, what her name is. I'll was. put the comment back up. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce she, the. She tall? She tall, possibly. I don't. <laughs> sorry, I not... we're butchering that. Um, what unresolved issues do you have in your mind that we need to calm and we need to, because the mind goes in and tries to resolve things as we sleep. So um, if there's something that's percolating in you throughout the day, Obviously, don't drag that into the evening. Try to shift the energy, like Hank mentioned, do a meditation. Right. But if there's something internally that we need to resolve, those nightmares will start going away. Yeah. And if you have a meditation practice going, that's great. If you are brand new to meditation, dive in and test the waters. Some people, when they begin to meditate, because it starts to heave, it can possibly start to heave um, heaviness up because it's like the 
uh, the fields in the winter time, right? So like heavy energies, as you start to tap, tap into meditation, it can shimmy to the surface, like unresolved issues. And for some people, it might become a little bit more anxiety when you start to meditate. And if that's the case, I would encourage you to move through that, but then maybe nighttime isn't the best time to start your meditation practice and you should do it in the morning. Uh, so that could go either way, depending where you're at with being a disciplined uh, meditation type person. Uh, and then the other thing there was going to, oh, a question you could ask, this is from access, like a clearing you could do, is just what energy space and what energy space, consciousness and choice could my body being and beyond be to have complete relaxation, peace and ease while I sleep tonight? And then, so you asked a question and allow whatever energy comes up like that's the state where you need to be and then the second part of this is you would say and everything that doesn't allow that i destroy and uncreate it and so and energetically what you're doing is you're bringing up the energy of where you need to be you're bringing up the energy of everything that would stop you from being there and you are allowing that to percolate and go away and then it lets you more easily slip into the space where you won't be having the nightmares and stuff like that yeah absolutely the other thing that just come, came through is medications if she's take are you taking any medications there are certain medications that can cause nightmares as well or um, certain essential oils when mixed with alcohol clary sage for example is an essential oil that when mixed with alcohol can cause night terrors so that is like another thing where uh, you would want to you know you never know like you would want to list out everything that you would be consuming supplement wise medication wise and, and food and food and spicy food will cause like nightmares a, as well. iron and calcium together can cause night cramps and restless leg so like um, even supplements at the same time can cause like things that could cause you to have a sleep issue so just to, really knowing what are you putting into your body and doing a little bit of research maybe contacting dr k because she has forgotten more of the stuff than most of us will ever know so she's a great resource i'm still learning it's a constant <laughs> yeah. learning process yeah, but you rattle off things i was like ah uh, like uh, i can't well if there's other things that i remember though like you know if I, we're talking about sound i could rattle off all kinds of things but i couldn't tell you about all the counterindicated supplements except for the and one i can't tell you about sound <laughs> so, <laughs> but hey. why we do the show together right, <laughs> right. So, but, but make a list and, and do some research are, are any of these things counterindicated that might cause nightmares and things of that nature so yeah so she told number one just don't watch tv uh give yourself two hours before you go to, go to bed number two maybe try the meditation see how that works do an affirmation number three look at your medication list supplement list essential oil list number four uh, yeah, I mentioned if you're taking any medications, um, and number five, look at what internal issues are you struggling with right now that just me may, may need resolution because they're sitting in the up subconscious mind and kind of percolating. And maybe, maybe you're kind of dragging those in before you go to bed. So last five minutes before you go to bed are really crucial to keep yourself calm. So look at those five or six things and let us know if we can help. I think that sums it up. <laughs> yep. And she was saying thank you. I don't know if she'll offer more around that, but I You're believe welcome. what we've said already has helped quite a bit. And Doug was just offering, um, if this certainly makes you reevaluate your day and how to structure it. Absolutely. Yeah. But all the well, unfortunately, like we don't like structure, but we need it. <laughs> I'm learning that. It's like one of those things. Um, what else? What else can we Your nervous system, we went over that. We talked about TV, having the TV on. So a lot of people I hear, I have a lot of clients, I can't sleep without some sort of noise. The fan has to be on, the TV has to be on. Um, what else? T uh, phone or some music or something. These things are emitting radiation, so they're not, uh, oftentimes not allowing you to have a deep REM sleep. So, you, so you're falling asleep and maybe it's calming you to fall asleep, but it's not allowing you to dive deep into that, into a good quality sleep, because these things are all emitting little radiate, radiative factors. Even having a TV in your room, unless you unplug everything, it is emitting, it is still emitting little radiation beams, such as your phone. So again, we talked about just unplug everything. Um, having a really dark room is really important too, because even something like your clock next to you that has the time written in green or red, that's, it, you can still see it through your eyes, even though you close your eyes. Uh, so it's really important to have a really dark room. So it allows your, your melatonin to keep flowing and your brain to kind of not have these little things that pop. So even in a hotel room, covering those things up if you're traveling. And if you, and if you absolutely have to have a time clock in your room, they have these ones that it's like a little projector. So it's not direct light then, because with the light, the clock, it's like direct light. But if you have the little projection thing, it shoots it up on the ceiling and it's 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 still a light in the room, but it's not as obnoxious as the, the actual clock where it's the full on 
something emitting light directly at you. Or cover and, it up. You know, it'll set it and it'll go off when you need it to go off. Right. But cover up the light if you don't. Yeah. If you can at least, you know, these are little, little, little things you can deal with. That now, what do you think of, uh, I haven't really noticed it helping me because we don't go have a consistent bedtime, but my wife has this clock where it starts bright, it has like this light, and then it simulates a sunset, and then when you wake up, it starts with the low light, and then it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. Do things like that help with uh, sleep cycles too? You know, I'm not, I don't know. No, no, I just I uh, want to make a comment. I have one of those too. It doesn't have a... No, she just knows that I'm going to go to my wife with whatever you say, and then uh, then I'm, she doesn't want to be accountable if uh, she's supporting my point of view versus her point of view. <laughs> that would probably be an experimental thing. Try it for a week, eliminate it yeah. for a week, and just see see how that goes. If you have to sleep with your phone next to you, I get it. Sometimes we have kids. Sometimes we worry about phone calls. Maybe try to put it on airplane mode if you absolutely have to have your phone next to you. Obviously, you won't be able to get texts. You won't be able to get emails but at least it kind of cuts down some things. I know some people use their phone as an alarm clock. If you put it on airplane mode, at least you're cutting off some of that frequency that's coming through, but you'll still, your alarm clock right. will still And you off. could still potentially get calls with Wi-Fi calling if you had it on flight mode, but Wi-Fi on, because those two can be um, coexist together. Oh, okay, you can talk on that. I'm not the Wi-Fi guru. So. I'm, I'm pretty sure, I might I might be wrong on that. And we just had someone saying, hi, Dr. K, thank you both for all this great hi, Mark. You're very welcome. <laughs> Awesome. Let's see what else. Steroids have an effect. Coffee. Sorry, Hank. Oh, no. No. Oh, here we go. I got to talk about coffee Today I got again. My caffeinated water. So <laughs> yeah, but it has an equivalent uh, caffeine as a cup of coffee. Caffeine in general. If you're a repetitive user of caffeine and you drink a lot of it, it kind of it jerks your adrenals so that they don't start. There's a small amount of melatonin that is produced there. Uh, and through your through your system, but it kind of jolts them where they're not at their rhythm that they need to be. So sometimes, you know, drinking coffee, um, like for me, I find if I have any coffee or anything caffeinated beyond about, I'd say one, I find I have a hard time staying asleep. It has an effect. It has that much of an effect on me. So that's something, again, if you've been in this cycle for a long time and you don't even notice, you drink, you have a cup, two, three cups of coffee daily. Some people have a cup in the afternoon. You're, again, going to have a tougher time falling asleep, staying asleep, having restless sleep. Yeah, and when it comes yeah. to coffee, so, we are going to be reducing that because um, I, I do a master cleanse every year and I totally cut caffeine out during that time. And the first time I did it, I got immensely ill from caffeine withdrawal, like nausea, vomit, like the whole, I was in the fetal position on the floor, miserable. And that's why most people quit the cleanse because they are, they start hitting caffeine withdrawal and they can't take it. And I got through that first day or two and then I was fine and I felt so amazing. Uh, but now I've learned all I had to do is wean myself. Like if I'm going to start a cleanse, uh, I start cutting back on my caffeine intake and you can wean yourself off. Cause if you just try to eliminate it all together, all of a sudden you may have get headaches, some headaches, re withdrawal yeah. symptoms. Like it, the, just a headache is a mild something you can have as severe as, as what I went through, but I was really Sorry. drinking a lot of coffee. <laughs> that, uh, that was What's a lot, Hank, What's a lot? A lot? you know, pot or two <laughs> morning throughout the day, uh, all kinds of stuff, energy, drinks because I was working oh. at the bank on those weird shifts and stuff. You yeah. know? Uh, so, so you have to keep going. That's, yeah. that's the challenge. So it becomes stress, stress of the job, stress on the adrenals, and then everything starts going wacky and then people have insomnia. And they're like, I have insomnia. Like, you don't like, have to give up coffee. I don't either. I was I was taunting the doctor by drinking my caffeinated beverage on air. So you don't have to give it up. But what, 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 Fair the, enough. Coffee, the timing of it for getting into your REM sleep. Try to do so, it. Yeah. But yeah. try to cut it off. Find your time, but try to cut it off maybe before one o'clock. Um, another tricky one is vitamin D. Taking vitamin D before 11 a.m., vitamin D taken after 11 a.m. can also cause a little bit of kind of restless, not able to fall asleep. It, it's a neurotrain. It acts as so many different things. It acts as a steroid. It acts as a neurotransmitter. It helps with the immune system. It helps with the gut. It does. It has a lot of different modalities and jobs in the body. So it may kind of just tinker with the neurotransmitters sometimes. So you so you may have a tough time falling asleep. And Mike was wondering um, that his grandmother actually gave him coffee to put him to sleep. Now there is this weird thing with um, some people, like kids, like that. they can act. It could be, some people have the opposite effect. So everybody is different. And take all this with a grain of salt because you do have to kind of figure out what works for your body and things. Because I, 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 Mike's not the first person I've heard that from. Like some kids with um, ADHD, perhaps even with like coffee would be something that would help them. I don't remember. There was some weird thing that seemed very counterintuitive to me that I read about that once, but. Um, Anyway, 
I've vaguely heard of that, but I've not researched it. So I don't yeah. want to comment on something I don't know what to yeah. about. Yeah, um, I'm just mentioning it that some people's bodies might have the opposite effect. Uh, yeah, everybody's DNA too. is different. And yeah. that's the challenge with research, as I mentioned before. People love tangible things. They love to hear, well, research has been done that this is this. And, you know, research is great. We, we do a cohort study on, what, 1,000, 2,000 people, but everybody's DNA is different. So what works for one person may not work for another person. And a lot of people say, well, I went to all this doctor and I, I'm going to go to the same doctor because he healed my friend. But then they go to the doctor and that, that naturopath or whoever, didn't, they don't have so much luck there because every single person's DNA is different. And every doctor comes in with their own knowledge and what they know and their own opinion. So I'm kind of realizing it's kind of, it's unwinding and finding out intuitively what works for a person because it's, we're not all the same. We're, we're all unique. We're all unique beings. So it's a challenge there. But after the age of 60, uh, sleep patterns start changing as well. So a lot of your health may be affected. You're on different medications. Medications interact and start causing different effects. So that's something else you, you want to take into consideration. I'm not a huge fan of medications. They have their goal and sometimes sometimes they're necessary, but I like to keep people at the most minimum amount of medications necessary uh, because that has a synthetic buildup and uh, medications have all sorts of, they have all sorts of heavy metals in themselves which cause neural t neurotoxicity. So, so the, the, yeah, this becomes this crazy cycle of things. Is there a reason that heavy metals are in things like that? Or is that like part of the filler that they use? They're part of the fillers. They're part of the stabilizers. <laughs> just to, yeah. So Essential oils is one don't of have things. fillers. So just uh, mentioning, because there, there are oils that can do a lot of things that, well, anyway, do some research and see if maybe there's alternatives. So if you have to be on a medication, is there anything natural that you could take that might be a little Always. bit less, um, an impact on the body, like these these long term toxicity effects from metals and things like that. That is a uh, something to be noted. It's a it's a big topic that a lot of people and I think a lot of doctors don't just aren't educated on, don't know, maybe don't believe in. It's swept under the rug by the pharmaceutical reps. It is, no, and yeah, we're we're. I come from both ends now, so it's you know I used to be in that realm. I didn't know any of this, and I was just giving ibuprofen and giving. Um, you know, uh, what else did I give? Meloxicam a lot. I didn't, and, and people are like, oh, I'm not getting any better. This isn't working. And I, I, and then I realized as I was kind of learning these things, and then I went on to get certified in functional medicine. I was like, wow, I'm really damaging somebody's stomach. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. You know, there's got to be better ways. So there is something called Marcozyme. It is nature's ibuprofen. Yes, you had to take a little bit to get into your system. So it's higher dosing to get to therapeutic levels, but it's a proteolytic enzyme. And it's quite helpful in a lot of in a lot of situations. So it's getting to the root cause, getting to I'm always about the root cause and trying to dig and investigate and find out what started this whole process to begin with. Is it emotional? Is it physical? And a lot of times it's a combination. Somebody has an emotional stress, unresolved issues that they're dealing with. They're working a heavy duty job like night shift, and they've got they're on a bunch of medications and have have metal toxicity and gut issues. So it's like, wow, okay, there's a handful of things to unwind here to see if we can get to sleep better. One thing I do want to mention too, when I teach aromatherapy classes, one thing that I like to mention is that just because something is natural doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. Poison ivy is natural, doesn't mean it's good for you, right? And there is some, if you look online, uh, one of the case studies I passed around in my class was somebody who saw something on a blog article about essential oils and did a formula for cataracts and put undiluted essential oils directly in the eye and ended up going blind. So what I would suggest that you do is do your own research, but contact someone like Dr. K or myself that has a uh, education and training around it because you don't want to just go on a blog article and follow its advice necessarily about the source i guess is what i'm saying and i don't know why maybe somebody was going to run off and do something i don't know but i got a real strong impulse to let people know don't just blindly read what you find online do a little research on your own have a conversation with someone like dr k and make sure that whatever you're going to choose to do is going to be good for you. Like um, wintergreen, for example, is a natural aspirin, but it's a super easy to overdose on that essential oil. And uh, you would only put like a drop or two in a whole blend. And there's been times where people like put a whole dropper full and then they have a bad effect because it thins the blood too much. So anyway, just things like that, do your research and make sure you bet the source at the same time. And don't just read what you read online at first glance is truth because it's not. We 
we all know that, right? Yeah, and so, everything right. in excess can be toxic. Anything in excess yep. can be toxic. So that goes anything from sex to everything. I mean, like, really, avocados, you can eat too much avocado and have, even though it's oh, a great food. Avocado, you're attacking all the things that I love the most, no. I mean, but, not like five avocados a day, you know, but know, maybe two, because two. people think it's a... <laughs> It's a good fat, but it's still, you don't want too much. And definitely contact Hank with essential oils. I, I know the basics in essential oils, but um, dis, especially undiluted, you know, these things can be toxic. They are highly, highly concentrated. And I have a great little protocol for insomnia you can put in your diffuser, but obviously somebody like me who likes to put a thousand drops in there, I'm like, no, just one or two is perfectly fine, you know? So um, definitely contact Hank, you know, for if, if you want to try like lavender's great. Uh, Depending on the yeah. lavender, some lavenders are stimulants. You know, because there's different types oh, of see, I don't, so, I don't even know that. So. Yeah, like you got to look at the botanical name with the lavender because so like spike lavender, for example, is a stimulant and lavender, I, I always mispronounce the Latin name. The one that begins with an A after Avogala or something, um, that one is the depressant one. Um, different species of lavender. Totally, totally different species and they have different effects. French lavender has different effects. There's, um, for example, in rose, there's over 350 different chemical components to the essential oil of rose. So there's like hundreds of chemical components and from species to species, it's all different. So the therapeutic benefits are very different. Once One reason why essential oils have had a hard time getting recognized in the medical community because a lot of the research that was done with them, they didn't note the botanical name. So you couldn't recreate the same thing because you didn't know what mm -hmm. oil they used. And so it didn't have as much validity. Now that uh, there's been some nurse practitioners that have really changed that, but have done a lot of good research with um, with keeping good notes and all that stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I, I just wanted to mention that, and I'm very passionate. No, that's about really those, good so. because yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, I tell people to use lavender. Lavender's great, but I wasn't aware that the difference. Different I'm not a certified aromatherapist. You have to thank for that. Funny story too, <laughs> with oils, especially too much of the oil gives you the opposite of the intended effect. So when the kids were babies. Uh, I would just put a drop of lavender like on their onesie to help them sleep at night. And one time, I, I don't know if I sneezed while I was doing it, but I put a whole dropper full and I'm like, oh, it's all right. The kid did not sleep a wink that night. Too much lavender can cause the opposite. So it's not like, it, it, the saying is less is more. Yes. Peppermint's yes. a vascular yes. dilator. It may help with headaches, but if you use too much, then it overstimulates and you could get a peppermint headache because it overstimulates the blood flow to the head. So it could cause a migraine. So that's just another example where you really want to make sure the, the amount that you're using is within the therapeutic realm where it's going to be a benefit and not a detriment. All right. Thank I'm you on for my that. Box now. That was really good. No, that was really good. So you want to seek out somebody who has extensive knowledge on aromatherapy. I'm not that person. I can make basic suggestions and then I'll send you over to Hank if you really want to dive into that. Um, another thing is, let's see, taking naps during the day. Uh, a lot of people like to take naps during the day. That disrupts the circadian rhythm. And so you have a harder time falling asleep at night because your body's already gotten some rest. Uh, so, sometimes, not all the time, but... Um, well, if you are going to do that, the sleep cycle is even more important because if you take yeah. a cat nap for 15 minutes and you didn't hit your 90-minute sleep cycle, like you, you really, that that's the thing where that might make a difference. If you got to get a nap, do you, is it going to cost you more than it's worth uh, if you have enough time to give you, yourself a proper cycle? Yeah, I find naps don't... I find that I can't do the 15 minute nap. It just, I can't, when I fall asleep for a nap in the afternoon, it's an hour to two hours. And it's usually I've really needed it. But then, you know, I have a little bit, and then I am actually more tired and then I can't fall asleep at night. So, now, you know. There, there's one thing around naps, so like an unrelated to sleep issues, like Thomas Edison, I believe, and some other inventors, they would take cat naps throughout the day they would but they weren't doing it for the purpose of resting but you when you when you start to fall asleep you have that moment that's in between like mm -hmm. where you're kind of dropping down into the transcendent state or whatnot and that's where they got all their inspirations for ideas so if you're looking for a creative type of thing like trying to fluctuate right in that nap space could actually give you a lot of inspiration but it's not necessarily good for your nighttime sleep yeah so there's a lot of factors um b6 and zinc deficiencies can also contribute to insomnia um, let me see what else. Yeah, da, da, da. yeah, that's another thing, you know, and then serotonin levels. If, so how is this related to the gut? If you have a leaky gut syndrome, you know, a lot of serotonin is produced in the gut. Serotonin, dopamine, all those new, a lot of neurotransmitters are produced in the gut. That's why they say the gut is the second brain. And if you think about it, what does your brain look like with all that 
convoluted stuff, your intestines look the same. So the stump, the GI tract almost can function almost independently on its own. So if there's mishmash in there and you don't have good, you know, probiotics, if your gut is not working properly, you're not producing these neurotransmitters, that can have implications as well. So bringing the gut to health, uh, cleaning out the liver are two things, you know, we can do to, to get things started. I always say the best place to start is the gut because a lot of people have gut issues. So that... That's a whole, you know, topic yeah. really in itself. We were planning on that as a topic anyway. I believe, I don't know if it was next week, but that was on our list of topics to cover. Leaky gut and hand in hand with that, I believe is candida because that's a, oftentimes a, a side effect of ca having a candida overgrowth is getting leaky right. gut. So right. that's a whole um, other world of ha happy conversations. <laughs> and it is, it is challenging sometimes to find out what's causing what. Other nutrients that... Um, can rebound hypoglycemia. So your, if your sugars, another thing that people have sometimes is they try to fall asleep, but they're really hungry. So like a rebound hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. So things like chromium, vandium, manganese, and a handful of other nutrients uh, that can wake you up abruptly if they're off in the middle of the night, and then you're unable to get back to sleep. Um, so regulating sugar regulation is, is an issue as well. Amino acids uh, are really important too. Um, yeah, I think that that covers a handful of them, a handful of things we discussed hormones, but that's, you know, um, getting an eye cover too. If you can't sleep in a dark room, the other thing you could try to do is get one of those, you know, eye covers, especially when you're in a hotel and getting earplugs. So you, you don't have any disturbances or disruptions that can, um, give you difficulty falling asleep. So sometimes I, I recommend that. Um, yeah, we turned out talked about it. and your bedding too. If you don't have a good mattress, that can cause back problems, uh, sleep problems. So making sure you're comfortable and having a good sleeping environment, making that a routine can be very helpful. Now, we talked uh, offline a little bit with people with potentially like snoring issues or sleep apnea. That's not yeah, necessarily that's something where you can't um, fall asleep, but could definitely impact the quality of the sleep. Uh, so is there um, anything you could speak around? Like if somebody, well, one, sleep apnea aside, if someone's a snorer, does that impact your sleep cycle? And if so, are there anything people can do for snoring specifically? And then uh, the, next to that would be sleep apnea, where you actually stop breathing during the night and you jolt yourself awake because of the lack of oxygen. Yeah. Um, so sleep apnea and snoring is ac actually implicated by alcohol as well. So alcohol will increase snoring, believe it or not. Uh, things of sleep apnea are a bit challenging um, because it, it won't so much cause insomnia as it will interrupt its sleep throughout the night. So that can increase your blood pressure. It can cause you to feel very fatigued throughout the day because you're not getting that oxygen intake. There is and has been a theory between leaky gut and sleep apnea. So sometimes correcting the gut, because a lot of times it's people, it's been implicated that people that are overweight tend to have the sleep apnea, but I know people that are not overweight that have sleep apnea. So there's a lot there. Is it structural that you have a uvula, that thing that hangs down the back of your throat that closes off the um, oxygen flow. And when that happens, then people are like, ah, uh, you know, and they can't breathe. And so it reopens and you have this, this pattern and you're not getting the oxygen. I tell people sometimes to support your head with a pillow so that keep your head forward so you're not all the way back. That can help. Uh, but sleep apnea is a little bit challenging because a lot of you have sometimes have to do a sleep study to really find out if that's what you have. Looking into the gut, that's the other place I start looking for sure. I mean, there are procedures you can have done to adjust the uvula. People want to go through that. There's the little thing for your nose. For some people that works, for some people it doesn't. That's something that I'm not really an expert on. <laughs> no, really I, a I, challenging one. Because I snore and I may have that. I don't know. Well, pro well, my wife thinks I do. So I'm going to assume that she's right. But one thing I read and I, I'm going to start practicing a bit more, but I'm going to, wherever I do this, it's going to annoy everybody. But there was a study with people learning to play the didgeridoo, which is that uh, Australian instrument where you're like, like doing all this like throat work that um, people who played X amount of minutes a day saw a reduction in snoring and sleep apnea. I mean, because I guess the theory is whatever the muscles are in the throat that you start to develop them 
or they get stronger and then that's less prone. I don't know if it's, uh, I only saw one study and who knows if it was truly accurate or not, but I have a didgeridoo. The problem is if I play it at the office, I annoy the people upstairs. If I play it at home, I annoy my family and my neighbors. So I don't have a good place to, uh, to play it so <laughs> to start uh, seeing if it's going to work for me. You have to find your place and do a study on you and yes. do that for a week to two weeks to see if that helps. I, you know, I'm sure it had, there's so many factors that can be an implication there. I, I'm just not a big fan of these devices that you have to, I could never sleep with something like that on my face. Um, I'm hoping they develop something better, but it could be a gut issue as well. And just, you know, losing weight can help as well. So ju just that in itself could be a, a very simple solution to that. So I would probably recommend if you are overweight to, to work on losing the weight and seeing if that can correct and help and then adjusting your pillow and maybe uh, use using Hank as a guinea pig and have him do that for <laughs> for two weeks, see a couple of weeks, see how it works and maybe he can get everybody one. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I wonder too, like, um, just like the frequency of how much I remember in terms of dreams. I don't always remember them. And I have to wonder if it's part of you know, what's happening between snoring and potentially sleep apnea, if it, I don't hit the, the brainwave frequencies where I would remember it as easily. And so, um, and we'll see. And you very likely don't because you're constantly interrupted. Right. If, you're, if you're having to wake up, you're, you're, you're not opening your eyes, but your body is, uh, you know, floating on the the different levels of the sleep cycle so you'll kind of just you know jerk and wake up and yeah uh, one of if you are waking up with headaches that is one of the symptoms of apnea because it, it, your oxygen deprivation of the brain it can cause a headache so if you like wake up and you have like morning headaches and then it kind of goes away that could sometimes be an indicator as well yeah there's a lot of reasons for morning headaches there's a lot of reasons for headaches in general but yes for sure you're not your brain is not oxygenating properly so try a few, see if you could do a few of those little things at home, just maybe put two pillows underneath you. Um, try to maybe, I don't know how they'd strengthen their muscles. Look into your gut, those two things. And then if that doesn't work, then maybe just getting a sleep study to have uh, somebody monitor you just to see how, how are you sleeping? I personally could never do a sleep study if I had to, I don't sleep well when I'm at somebody else's house, sir. It's just, just nothing like your own bed, you know? So if I was, somebody was staring at me all night long, I don't know how well I sleep. Well, they probably just have cameras set up now, right? Or do they actually still have live people do that with the, as much automation as we have? I'm curious. Well, I'll probably end up eventually getting one. We'll see. They're just not There's working. all sorts of contraptions though. They do put contraptions on you to see what your heart rhythm, what, you know, I'm sure they have minimized that and technology has changed since last night. They I've probably have some tech they send you home with and you don't even have to go in anymore. Who knows? That actually, would be really cool. Picture. Like, like a portable EKG thing that they give for heart patients and stuff like that. I have not heard of that yet. Most people I know in the past year, year and a half that have gone had to go stay overnight. Or is that, oh, you mean for the sleep study? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I know there was a company that was, um, there's somebody that had it through the expo that was doing something with it. I have to go book them up. But I think my first, for me personally, will be to uh, do the weight thing do a master cleanse, get the body balanced out, get rid of the caffeine, and then- uh, I think that would be a good place to start, Hank. Yeah, I just don't, I just really like my caffeine. Yeah. Um, tryptophan, that's another one for insomnia and feeling un unrested, um, won't let you stay asleep, but that's, that's the basics. But trying to find some of these simple things, you know, like I, talked about the broad categories in the beginning. So is it emotional, physical, um, sluggish liver, leaky gut, medication interaction, and the little things you're doing at home? That would be where I'd start, you know, trying process of elimination of those things or looking at all those things and make yourself a little list. Am I having physical problems? Uh, I mean, uh, emotional problems, stress. Could it be the adrenals? Maybe we just need to check the adrenals and see how the adrenals are functioning. Um, how many medications am I on that could be interfering? Look up the side effects of your medications. Um, looking into leaky gut, if your gut's kind of not feeling right on and off, you have acid reflux, these sorts of things going on, that could be a place to look. Um, let's see, uh, and checking into a viral infection, if that could, if all those things are like, nope, 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 I'm doing all these things, sleeping with a dark room, not watching TV, you've, you've eliminated all these simple things 
oh, and don't eat really late at night either because that will, if you're eating, I'd say, depending on when you go to bed, if you go to bed at eight o'clock, really don't eat anything past five, 5.30, six o'clock. If you go to bed at 10, probably nothing beyond, you know, eight because if you're eating all this food right before you go to bed, you're not gonna be able to sleep either. If you, especially if you eat a very heavy meal before you go to bed, you're not gonna sleep well either. That implicates the gut. And with, with the, the biggest meal of the day in Germany, they say in the morning you eat like a king, in the afternoon you eat like a nobleman, and in the evening you eat like a peasant. But, the, but with the end thing that you eat the big meal of the day at the beginning, and then the middle size, and then at night you want to eat the lower amount because you're getting ready for bed and not to give your body as much to have to metabolize overnight and that kind of thing. So they use that kind of as a um, as a interesting example. Because yeah. in Spain they eat their larger meal at night. They, I mean, they their dinner. Uh, when I was in Spain, we, we went to the restaurant like. What is it like? Eight thirty, nine o'clock. There was nobody there. Start at eleven. It's packed, and we're like on our way out. So, you know, each culture yeah. is different too. Have you ever heard of Dr. Tannenbaum? By chance, uh, the, the name rings a bell. There's an app. I think it's on Apple, but it's like um, healthy cures or whatever. But my favorite thing is at the very end, he has like this section that says final thoughts, and it says. Um, you know, in France, they eat a ton of cheese and a ton of wine, and they have fewer heart attacks than Americans. And in Italy, they have all this pasta, and they have wine, and they have fewer heart attacks than Americans. And Germans eat fatty sausages and drink beer all day, and they have fewer heart attacks than Americans. And it goes through all these examples. In Japan, they have fish and rice, fewer heart attacks. And then it says at the end, eat what you want. Apparently, speaking English is what kills you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. But we, with that said, um, people in Italy and in those places have a totally different stress right. level. Well, that's what he said afterwards is like, here <laughs> we get the lowest vacation amount uh, anywhere yes. on the planet, the longest work weeks. Like in Germany, by law, you got to have two days of vacation for, um, uh, per month. So you would start any job with 24 days of vacation. And that's in addition to any time you have, you're sick, that's just covered. Uh, so you're already starting with so much um, ability to be away from the job, shorter work hours, things are closed in the afternoons. You know, it's um, a exactly. whole culture. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really a culture stress. thing. Yeah. And wine is not necessarily bad. Um, you know, wine is good for you in some ways. It has a lot of bilberry, which is an antioxidant. Uh, it does have a lot of sugar, though. But it does have good effects on the body, especially for for men. Women, it's a little more challenging. It um, is a precursor to cancer, so it just it affects estrogen. Sorry, gals, you know, <laughs> consistent wine drinking here. But in America, things are different because big pharma is really high in America. I don't find that that's the case in European countries. They no. are open to homeopathics. That are they are open to natural ways. Their <laughs> soil is different. Their food content is different. They don't have all the toxicity we have in America. And yeah, my so my wife's cousin is a, doc, a medical doctor in Germany. Well, he studied in Germany. I think he moved uh, to a different country afterwards. But one of his electives that he was able to choose in medical school was aromatic medicine, aromatherapy. Yeah. And it's like, a, it's a whole different world. Things here that are, we switched pediatric doctors um, when, when we had uh, Max, because we wanted to give fennel tea uh, to help with intestinal issues. And our doctor said, that's an old wives tale. Yet that same fennel tea in Germany is stamped with their medical board. That's an approved thing for what we were using it for. And that's why we switched. Like you're not even open to hearing what we would like to use saying that's an old wives tale, but like German medical community said totally different. Anna was uh, saying that some people, and she's in the medical industry, uh, some people insist that they need the TV on as they sleep, but also report poor sleep. It's really hard to talk to them about the fact that the TV might be the issue. Yes, Anna, thank you. That is such a good point because I hear that time and time again. I have to have the fan on. I have to have music playing. I have to have the TV on. And you know what that really is? It is the ego desperately trying not to allow the things that really need to be looked at to come up to the conscious level. Exactly. Thank you. Yes, it's stillness, learning to be in the stillness. It's what do you not want to look at? And that's a real challenge for people. And that's something yeah, we both work on here. It's just because when you find the stillness, I love it. I can't go without it. It has to be, for me, it has to be super quiet, like nothing, nothing. Can't be going on downstairs either. <laughs> I love the stillness, but a lot of people don't know how to, they don't know how to live in, in life with the stillness. And I think that's, that's a common thing in America. It can be very uncomfortable. Go, go. It can be very bad. uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, and one thing, when you do have someone like that, the 
you know, you can't make anybody change, but if you go into the energy of it with no intention to make them change, just to provide information and that you give them the space for them to choose something different, because if you like, you got to do this. And I, I don't know like how you come across to people, but um, if you're, you say you have to do this, this is the effect that you get for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. Like try to make anybody do anything. Good luck. Right. But all you, but if you just create, um, a dialogue and offer information, but really from the space of not having a point of view or intention to ch make them change or choose anything, you then create right. a space where they can have a different choice. Uh, and, you know, you can't make them choose. It's like you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Same type of yeah, thing. Can provide... I had a saying yeah. this morning about that. Tuma may concern. Maybe it's time you knew that the enlightened person doesn't ask anyone to believe anything. They simply point the way and leave it to the people to realize it for themselves. Yep. Yeah, that's it. And that's awesome. And that's challenging for me because it, it is sometimes challenging because I so I I foresee what a person can have and be and that, their health that they can achieve. Um, and I want to drill that into their heads, but I'm realizing I can't. Right. I can't. But the People most are... powerful way, asking questions like uh, I, I don't think I've told this story on air anywhere yet. Um, when I got sober, like when I first went into rehab and everything, I really thought I just have an alcohol abuse issue. Like I'm going to be back to drinking, you know, down the road or whatever. And um, like four weeks sober, I had to go to Germany to get Anya. Like the visa paperwork got, had gone through. So I'm going to like the beer capital of the world, right? And as I'm there, uh, somebody had given me this uh, set of CDs called the Paul Fisher Big Book Workshop. And the very first CD, um, Paul Fisher, who's the, the one facilitating this particular workshop, he's just going through and asking these questions. And I'm listening to it and I'm just kind of going along with it in my head. And then at the very end, he's like, okay, so now based on your own awareness, are you an alcoholic? I'm like, damn. And like just the way that the questions were posed and then allowing someone to come to their own awareness had such a potency. And that's the moment where I really uh, started getting better. Like, cause I, I had the awareness like, wow, I really do have this issue. This isn't just like a temporary thing. I'm going to really look at it now, but it was, it, no one was telling me I was it. It was all through this process of asking questions, offering examples from your own life, asking questions. And then the, the coup de gras was, and based on your own experience now, what is your awareness? Is really yeah, that's question. a key point and yeah. i think that's the the uh, one of the ending comments i want to make here is that i would love to wave my magic wand and have people get better like that uh, and sometimes a lot of times that does happen it's based on everybody's awareness but if i took everything away so quickly for somebody if i took away all your pain if i took away everything then you're taking away that person's journey to come to their own awareness and go wow ooh, i was doing this yeah. all this time so it's part of it's part of the learning process and the journey. And my goal is to get people there. And that's when the magic happens is when you go, oh, wow, it was just this. That's all. Or, or no, this is not, you know, sometimes the person has to come to it themselves. And then there's no greater joy than to see that. But I truly wish I could just make everybody better. But I, I was told yesterday, like, sometimes you if you do that, you're taking away from that person's learning the lesson they need to learn you're just helping them through that and to to get to that so right. thank you for that point that's really important and for my closing two things you have the website for dr k up in the upper left hand corner there so if you want to check that out or through the center's website our site you can just go to hhh.life and under services and then practitioners or i think it says our team um, all of our information is there if you want to connect with me if you want to connect with dr k all that's there for you and i'll leave you guys with a question because i believe that being in the question is and not looking for an answer <laughs> is really where the magic is at. So ask yourself, what what could I be aware of today that if I were to be aware of and acknowledge could change my entire life with total ease? You have to type that in. That's a very long sentence. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, me no. <laughs> let me see if I can read it up here. Uh, so. Yeah, remember all that and type that in. <laughs> and I be. Oh, wait, what did I even say now? I don't remember. Uh-huh, right. <laughs> what? Could what can I, I be, be aware of that if I were to be aware and acknowledge could change my life with total instantly with total ease? Total ease. Okay, I'm putting it in. I'm correcting awesome. my little red squigglies. Oh wow, I butchered that word so bad that it doesn't even what it was. Because healing can happen instantaneously, and I tell people that all the time. It can happen really fast, depending on where your receptivity is, what you're aware of, 
when it, things come to awareness, things change really fast. It's how fast you're going to, how receptive are you going to be? Are you going to allow that to happen? Right. So, and the other thing, the other question, because it goes along with this, a lot of physical uh, manifestations of things going on are things that the body is acknowledging because the being's unwilling to acknowledge it. So like, what are you aware of that you're not acknowledging? that if you were to acknowledge could change everything because a lot of times the body's like oh you're not going to acknowledge that i'll acknowledge it and so that back pain is it even yours are you acknowledging somebody else's pain that you weren't just willing to be aware of so just uh, little things like that especially for our empaths out there that could be a huge shifting point is to recognize a lot of the things you might be experiencing are just your body acknowledging things that you the being aren't willing to or unable to acknowledge in that moment and to start asking questions like this starts to shift it and lets it percolate into your awareness and you ask a question like that it's about the energy it's not about the words you say that question and you feel the energy come up and that's the space to be in that will start to facilitate change in your world so yeah maybe we need to, well, you just that. you did a whole thing on stillness but to help people gain stillness because that's where the answers are guys that's where the answers are so if you're looking for answers you have to find a way to be still because when there's there's a lot of noise in the world on so many different levels the tv the media i don't even watch tv i haven't watched tv in close to a year i just i can't i i'm so sensitive that even like a, a i love horror movies by the way yeah. halloween's my favorite holiday but <laughs> when i watch a horror movie i get so intense i feel it through my whole solar plexus through my heart chakra i i can't even it sucks because I'm like, I can't even handle that anymore. I can't even handle movies. Um, it's going to stimulate different areas of congestion. So really, it's just, it's a lot, you know, we take on other people's stuff and finding stillness. There's so much noise in the world. You hear people talking, you're in your own head, creating the stillness, the space between the ohms is where the stillness lies. And that's where the answers are. So if people are looking for answers, we have to help you find a way to gain some stillness. And I would invite you to look for awarenesses to make choice. Don't look for answers because when you answer something, you're in definition and conclusion, but it's just an awareness and you make a choice. So you, you go for the awareness and make a choice. And uh, you, I mean, I know that's not the the way you were using the word, but I'm a, right. I'm, 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 I'm big on words and people, <laughs> like, people can use words correct energetically, but not everybody who's aware of that would know that. So I just want to bring that up. And for the stillness, my meditation teacher, uh, Mark Thomas at Fellowships of the Spirit in Lilydale, gave this example. When you start to meditate, it's like you go to the, like if you look at it like a movie screen, um, before the movie starts, the screen is white and that represents the silence. And once the movie starts, the thing to remember is the screen is still white amidst the projection and the illusion that you perceive on it. So you start to meditate and you start to do practices of mindfulness but the end goal is to recognize that that silence is ever present in everything whether it's a crying baby um a, yes. a school shooting a beautiful moment at a sunset the silence is ever present if you're willing to be open to it and receive it in every moment yeah, yeah so. and that, that's the interesting point is you know how they always say let's have a moment of silence let's have a moment of prayer there's a reason that's done before a football game before a basketball game whatever there's a reason that's let's have a moment of silence and somebody passes away. There's a reason that's done. So it allows for that peace to come in. And that's where that's the, the silence is and stillness is always in the background of everything. We've just learned to, we have become a little disconnected to it. Yeah. And I'll leave you guys with an affirmation. I see Mike commenting and uh, it reminds me there's a school in Euclid called Rishi's Metaphysical Institute still there. You can go and uh, they take, they have, different classes starting at different times and it's all free by contribution they pass around a basket and they say even if you can't afford money just put your blessing in and that's enough but they have this credo that they begin all the classes with and here it is for you it is my desire to sit calmly upon the throne of my own body what did i screw it up already it is my desire to sit calmly upon the throne in the temple of my own body between the two great pillars of positive and negative vibrations balancing them to the point where i can radiate through my temple of light to all whom i contact the wonderful peace poise power wisdom love and harmony of god and that is a great way that's to start beautiful. your day a great can you way check to that start. out <laughs> no <laughs> no that's a long thing to type but oh, i I'm gonna uh, have to go back and write that down that's a good one yeah, well, what I will do for the next, this gives you a reason to come back next week. I will have it written up. <laughs> I will post a link to a website where you can read it. Um, well, since it's not mine, I probably shouldn't do that. But I, I will have it written up, and I'll just post it next time. That would be uh, lovely. Yeah. Well, it was wonderful having our conversation. I look for uh, next week. this was helpful for all yeah, of you. I think it was. It was helpful for me. I was, the, the, the whole sleep apnea thing, I, I was asking for a friend. So it definitely was helpful for me. <laughs>
It's unfortunate that one. I just don't have an enormous amount of answers on aside from I think losing the weight, Hank, might be helpful. Start start with the things you just talked about. Because that is, I'm not the problem. really overweight, but uh, I, I could lose a little weight. But yeah, I didn't say that. I didn't say I that. Know. Never said that. I know. I'm I'm pro I'm projecting on myself. Oh boy. All right, guys. <laughs> but it was wonderful you being with us. We'll be back next Friday. Uh, around 10 o'clock again yeah. for another episode of holistic highlights probably about leaky gut but we're going to kind of leave it open we'll see if something else percolates up but that will be the intention to start with is leaky gut and probably can do to go hand in hand with that yeah absolutely. all right guys until next okay. time see you later. bye bye take care